viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. We've got uh, Dan Gaynor of newsbusters.org with us this afternoon. A little longer uh, getting to him than was normally the case, but um, I, I'm confident we <laughs> it doesn't matter whether we had a, a full hour or two hours, we wouldn't be able to get to it all in uh, that time frame. And Gary, good afternoon. Uh, Gary, Dan, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, well, good afternoon to you as well. And I tell you, that those kind of local interviews are important when you've got an election coming up. It just has to be done. So, it does. Yeah, well, thank um, you. I feel the love still. I'm not worried about oh, it. I know, I know. <laughs> All right. So what love? What love? We, we've got people. You know, I saw in the paper earlier today, uh, one, this is the, uh, the most divisive this country has ever been and divided or uh, yeah most divided and that uh president trump is considered the most divisive president you know it's interesting why is it the president that is the cause of this division and uh no one else or uh, no other well, party well i don't get well, that can, first of all can we address this point because you hear this line all the time right now what state are you in again north carolina right um now there's a time in history where North Carolina joined with a bunch of other, other states. states. That's right. You know, they got together. They did something. I'm trying to remember what it was, you know. <laughs> okay, so if we, the, if folks, if you all don't know what it was, it was the War of Northern Aggression. But okay, I apologize. <laughs> oh, the war between the states, the Civil right, War, right. take your pick. Take, take your political historical spin. I don't care. That's not the point. The point is, okay, so first of all, if you're going to Make a comment like that. Make it so that you say, after the, since the Civil War. Okay, okay then let's point. start there. Let's go back to the 1960s. Uh -huh. Because the 1960s, we experienced not one, not two, but three major national political assassinations. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention smaller assassinations, but right. major figures. The President of the United States. His brother, who was running for president of the United States, and oh, by the way, Martin Luther King, one of the you know most uh, biggest historical figures from that era as well, and they're all assassinated. We had a major unpopular war uh, going on. Right. We had the draft going on. We had riots. We had so many riots that. TV shows from the era had to address them. I still remember the Dragnet Martin Luther King uh, assassination episode because they had to talk about how the police strategy to handle the riots. You know, so so I, if you want to say that the tension is different today than then, I'll agree with you. If you want to say that, you know, we can talk about it. But okay, so let's let's narrow it down. This is probably the most divided the country's been since. since. Oh wait, wait. Let's leave. We're not leaving. We don't want to leave one out. Oh, what about Watergate? So now we're no longer even fifty <laughs> years back. Now we got to move forty-five years back <laughs> yeah. because of, because of Watergate, which also divided the country. Right. So and then you know, so people talk a lot. And usually when they say stuff like this, they don't have a historical perspective. That's why I want to skewer that, first of all. Okay, you know, that, that uh, um, all the more reason why we always enjoy having Dan Gaynor here on the studio, in, the, in this studio, on the program with us. Yes, he's been in the studio in the past. Uh, this, that is an important observation, Dan. Yeah, Ross has to get married again for me to come down. And I don't, oh. I'm pretty sure his lovely wife would not allow that. Uh, well, wait a second. <laughs> We're going to redo the marriage just because we think he may have um, messed up on one or two of the uh, uh, promises. I'll tell you what. We're going to take a quick break on that one so I can find out about that. Stay with us here on Viewpoints with Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org. We do have the good, bad, and the ugly coming up as well and so much more. Stay with us here on the program. Viewpoints on the talk station, FM 107 AM 1240. It's Friday afternoon. It's that time of day when we get the opportunity to hear about the, the good, the bad, and the ugly from Dan Gaynor of newsbusters.org. And by the way, as I prepare to bring Dan back on, just want to remind you, go to that website, please, newsbusters.org. Um, I, I I, I cannot stress the value of this. And by the way, some of the research that comes from his parent organization, the Media Research Center, is outstanding to such a degree that other media, I find that really um, 
uh, the little the little interesting. Other media are quoting MRC, and quite often the quotes are critical of the very media that are quoting MRC. That's an odd one. All right, Dan, before we get back to that little uh, paradox, let's talk, and irony, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll start with the good. Well, the good is important this week because I really want people to know about it. There's a a new movie out. It's a very pro-life movie. Points the, a lot of pokes a lot of holes in the abortion industry. It's called Unplanned. Mm-hmm. I really urge people. I know, I know some of the people involved. In this I urge people to get involved and not just go to see this movie, but share information about this movie. Because mm-hmm. guess what's happening? Let me guess. They won't let this be promoted on the major networks. Not just the major networks. Oh, really? We're talking about Lifetime, Home and Garden Television, and oh. the Hallmark Channel. Oh. You, so if you I, happen to, oh, let's say, really? hypothetically like one of those channels, um, you might reach out you know, and say, hey, I'm not really happy about that. And... Um, you know, tell them, tell them that you want them to run the ads because this is an important movie. It profiles uh, somebody who worked for Planned Parenthood and then, you know, left them and why. Yeah, this is, I really urge people to go see this movie. And so I had somebody working for me this week. He, he made a point. He's like, hey, I want to see that movie tonight and write about it. Is it okay? And I'm like, heck yeah. You know, on his night off, basically, he wants to go see it. Uh, so that's the good, but the, there's nice. an overlay of bad because it's media, and there usually is now. All right, the movie is unplanned, just as I stated, unplanned. If you have the opportunity, and we're going to look it up to see if we can find out where it's playing in certain theaters uh, here in shortly, see if it's probably playing in our area. Unplanned. All right, that's the good. Um, well, overlaid with a little bad. What's the bad? Well, the bad actually... It's got its good side. This is a weird week. Uh, the good side, this comes to us from uh, a writer who works for, I think it's New Yorker Magazine and also HuffPost. And he posted on Twitter today, I had like a 25-tweet comment about his interaction with an NBC, MSNBC political editor who he accused of bullying him to benefit who? The Democratic Party. Really? So what happened was uh, Yasher Ali, this reporter who, who for the record, seems to be pretty much a straight shooter as far as uh, you know, coverage. has done a lot of good reporting over the, the, the last year that, that has gotten a lot of attention on left and right. So really, I mean, somebody, somebody who seems to actually do a good job and is pretty honest. Uh, but I, and I, I honestly, I'd say that if I, if I wake up tomorrow and see a hit job from Yasher attacking me, I'd still say, by and large, he's been pretty honest. Uh, so, you know, he, he had discovered what he thought were the actual dates of the debates. Uh-huh. And he reached out, and basically he had a little mini scoop, and so he wanted to report the scoop, reached out to the DNC, and they said, hey, can you give us 10 minutes, we'll get back to you. And the next thing you know, he hears from the political editor from NBC, MSNBC. Now, the debates involve the network, but the reporter was basically just telling him, oh, hey, you know, drop this. Let the DNC call people first. Wait. And, you know, he was incredulous that the reporter like, hey, when I worked for the Washington Post, I think that's where the Washington Post, Washington huh? Post, you know, Oh, we, we held off stories all the time. Well, they held off stories because you worked in national security and you didn't want to get people killed. This is not the same thing. So, the, so I mean, the reporter goes all in on this, and it's just, it basically reminds you everything that you thought for years, that, the, that reporters actively work for one side. I mean, this goes back to uh, Ali Watkins from the New York Times. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to use the euphemism dating uh-huh. for source right. and then writing stuff. You know, this is, it's, we, we have found more and more that journalism, not in all levels, because look, I'm, I'm highlighting a, a journalist here. So not all journalists are in the tank or doing bad work, it's, but a lot of them are. 
We, we, it's just astonishing. What, what's interesting, and by the way, I'm looking at the story. It was the Huffington Post, wasn't it? The yes, reporter works for the New Yorker and Huffington Post. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, and and uh, I can't. Okay. I know you have You can't get past that. I can't. Just I can't. trust me. It's, I, a, it's a contributor. He doesn't work full time. I know, right, but but still, and all. I. I okay. Um, yeah. Well. Uh, okay, we're, we're going to move on. I, I'm I'm a little shocked by this story uh, because of the profession, but that's another story altogether. All right, that's the bad. Now for the ugly. Okay, all together. Everybody know what the ugly was this week? Uh, it's got to be the M- Mueller report. Of course it oh, does. Okay. Right. Because, you know, after two <laughs> years of saying... <laughs> That there had to be collusion of putting that moron, Adam Schiff, on television, putting that other moron, Swalwell, or that other, you know, they just go down the line of the morons, putting him on television, letting them claim there's collusion, and then being proven wrong, and then continuing to be collusion truthers. <laughs> Where they're like, oh, what's well, not collusion? You know, it's not, we haven't seen the full report. Well, let's remember a key thing here. I know you haven't seen the full report. But when BuzzFeed misreported something that Mueller said, Mueller came out and blasted right, them and right, said, oh, well, that's not true. Right. So you've got to believe that, that, um, oh, you know, that the gosh. Barr report is pretty that's an accurate estimate of the Mueller report right, because right. of that. Nevertheless, the media they did such an atrocious job, and now they're, now they're oh, well, I, I love the narrative of Donald Trump is angry and mean to the press now because of this. <laughs> you guys spent two years accusing him of working for a foreign power. Hell, some of you, a lot of you, are still doing it, saying that he is a traitor. He'd be the first president in American history right. to basically be a, a Manchurian candidate, I guess I guess it's more like a Vladislavian candidate or something like the Leningradian candidate. <laughs> um, you know, and... To accuse him of that, and then shocker, when it's finally proven wrong, that he comes out and blasts you. God, I, I can't imagine why. That's like accusing somebody of rape but wait, wait, for wait. two years, and then finding out that you were wrong, and then the person said, well, you know, that's because you're this. <gasps> How dare you say that about me? We don't. Th- I, this leads to several uh, observations associated with the media and the trust factor as well, Dan. And of course, there's Dan, a trust factor. Uh, is there a trust factor? That's exactly. Right. Uh, Dan Gainer of Newsbusters.org with us. Um, first off, the the president has blasted the media now for two years, and it it became well exceeded, for two and a half two years, and a half years because he did do it during the campaign. He did, so. but. But it goes back to, uh, you know, the correspondence. By the way, I understand the president may attend the correspondence th- dinner this year, but it goes back to that. So now all of a sudden they're feeling targeted. My gosh, they've been targeting him. They've been targeting this administration. As a matter of fact, you'll appreciate this. Uh, later this afternoon, uh, the audience will hear an interview I did with Lara Trump. Uh, that is uh, Donald Trump's, uh, President Trump's daughter-in-law, who works for his uh, re-election campaign committee. And we chatted about something that has been expressed on our program in the past by other callers and guests about how much the president continues to take the slings and arrows of criticism on a minute-by-minute basis from the media. And Laura Trump herself commented that she and her husband and family cannot even go out without being shouted out, be shouted at by being uh, harassed, uh, cussed, things of this nature. I, you know, the the problem I have with this, Dan. You know, we, the program started with my question about the divisiveness. The, the media is there is is there no one in the media who is, and we're talking in the mainstream media. We're not, not talking a little community media such as I'm engaged in because quite frankly uh, we live among the very people we write about they on the other hand live in the ivory towers my question is is there anyone out there who is has any uh, it's just a rhetorical question I'm sure have has any sense of of propriety and responsibility here well, I mean, clearly someone does, because, and I will I think, call out Yashir Ali because it okay. probably means he'll get attacked by somebody. Uh, but, I mean, clearly there are still people, even people whose work appears in HuffPost. Right. I, I worked 
there are several people who work for the New York Times they used to work with. Uh, you know, I, I believe in them. I don't always agree with everything they write, but I, I still believe that in their hearts, I think they want to do a good job. The problem is simple, is that the American press, and this is not just me saying this, I mean, this is a lot of people saying this now, a lot of famous journalists saying this, that the American press decided that Donald Trump is bad. And they pick sides. And now they're, they're I mean, you one need only look at the media coverage on CNN. Forget everything else. Mm-hmm. Just look at CNN. You would think that Donald Trump were an axe murderer mm-hmm. for, the, for the cover, except, frankly, criminals get better coverage than Donald Trump. And better treatment. They, yeah. They, yeah. they hate him. I, you know, I, I've joked that Donald Trump could cure, could cure cancer and they would criticize him for it to all the jobs he would, he would, you know, put people he put out of work. Um, I've said that aliens could invade and they would get better media coverage than Donald Trump does. And there's no amount of hyperbolic statement I could say. I, I mean, Satan could reveal himself, and there would be journalists going out there saying, "Well, we need to you know, understand him and give him a, you know, a fair, you know, fair story." And then they, the same journalists turn around, but Donald Trump, he's evil. I'm like, huh? But I, that is how bad the coverage is now. This is, and and of course, the other side of this is what it's doing insofar as the civic discourse. And of course, we've chatted about that at kind of the opening about the divisiveness nature of the. Uh, of the um, of the of the uh, coverage. By the way, as we go to the break, I just want to make mention of this. If I understand this correctly, it is appearing in Jacksonville, and the hours. And by the way, I'm sorry when I say it's appearing. That is the movie Unplanned, 7:15 and 10 p.m. in Jacksonville. I do have that. I don't see it happening in any of the other markets in our community. I don't see one in. Uh, do you, you? I'm looking at it right now. Thank you, Taylor. I appreciate that. Possibly in uh, New Bern. I don't see that, but I know it's 7 and 10 p.m. at AMC Classic in Jacksonville, 16. All right, you're listening to Viewpoints with Dan Gaynor here of Newsbusters.org. AMC Classic Jacksonville, 16. That's the, um, I guess, um, that's the screen. I'm not sure what Jacksonville 16 is. AMC Classic Jacksonville, 16. And the that's the movie times. Uh, for uh, unplanned 7:15 and 10 p.m. That's 7:15 p.m. Pardon me, and 10 p.m. Uh, so uh, do go watch that movie. There are other movies there as well, Dumbo and Us. But uh, unplanned is the one we're talking about, as we heard just a few moments ago. Getting no coverage, no promotional ads accepted by uh, the major media and even the. Um, well, the outer orbits of Lifetime and uh, Discovery, et cetera. Just for your information, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't meet and uh, parallel their narrative. Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org with us. Dan, uh, the possibility of the president attending the correspondence dinner, uh, is that, a, uh, is that, is that a, uh, a veiled threat or do you think that's a real possibility? Well, I think he might do it because... <laughs> I mean, talk about taking a victory lap. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, of all Donald Trump, <laughs> see, see, people are thinking, oh, he's not magnanimous in victory. Actually, I think he can be. Oh, but, but wait a second. That, but, no, wait, wait, wait. You have no right to use that because that was written by Winston Churchill, who was a definite colonialist. And, of course, as Scott <laughs> yeah. Kelly discovered, as Scott Kelly discovered, as he displayed that on his uh, missions uh, in the space station and then had to apologize. And he, he was woke. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not apologizing for lo- for liking Winston Churchill. Anybody who doesn't like it can. can <laughs> no, I'm um, with you. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, bugger off. I think uh, is the yeah, appropriate. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's appropriate. I was trying to think what Britishism I could probably get away with. Uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of them I could not. So, but you know, the Trump Trump going is. I mean, it, on one hand, it looks like he's trying to make peace with the press. On the other hand, it is just one giant trolling. Uh-huh. Because he gets to go there and speak, and, and he gets to take some digs at people, and you know, make some jokes about people. But the fact that he's there, 
when they all thought he'd be impeached by now. Right. I, I think <laughs> it... they, they all were. They've been so out to get him. Never in the history of our country has the American press so unified trying to destroy not just a president, but his family, right. his business, everything, everyone related to everyone in his administration. And, and I say this. I, I know a lot of these people. You, you know, it's not just Laura Trump. I mean, I know a lot of the people who have relatively obscure jobs in administration, but still political jobs, uh-huh. and they are under constant attack. I'll, be, I'll pick, up, pick up a newspaper. I'll see somebody written up. I see a good friend of mine, an almost lifetime friend of mine, written up in the Washington Post. I will turn on TV and see another friend of mine being attacked by Rachel Maddow. And, and it's like, this is nearly incessant. Because unlike when Obama was in charge, yes, you would occasionally have Fox target Van Jones because Mm -hmm. it turns out Van Jones was a 9-11 truther. Right. Yes. By the way, Van Jones has a job at CNN now. So it didn't really hurt him too much. But nevertheless, nevertheless, (laughs) you'd see stuff like, you know, like that and Fox go after him. But there would not be this. It's not even a mob. It is like Donald Trump. Stepping into politics was like you stepping into an entire lake filled with piranha. Right. And you stepped in with your family, your friends, all these people support you, and you all jumped into the lake. And you're all under constant attack as they try to rip the flesh from your body. Uh That's what the press are trying to do. They've never done this for any other political party, never done this for any president. They didn't go after Nixon this way. No, they did not. I, you know, it's it's unprecedented. I, it, it, it is. Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org. Dan, we've got a minute to go. I've got to bring up one other story I just saw a little while ago. And I, I just I, I find this ironic that um, there are uh, staffers at the Southern Law Poverty Center. The, so sorry, Southern Poverty Law, Law Center. Center. SPLC. The SPLC. What a garbage organization. What, and and, and I, I mean... That these are people that are trying to, uh, 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 well, I guess what, take care of the, um, the, uh, the, the minorities, take care of those who are unrepresented, and they themselves are some of the biggest uh, accused, uh, they've, uh, uh, pardon me, they've been accused, accused of being some of the biggest, biggest, biggest racists, yes. Uh, SPLC uh, rumbled with the Klan many years ago and did some good work fighting the Klan. And, uh, you know, right, right. Yay, I mean, I mean that, yay, good job but is turned into an anti-Christian, anti-conservative hate group. Uh, and in the land of karmic justice, which I don't believe, but I always revel in <laughs> saying, yeah, like that. Um, you know, they, they have themselves become, you know, exactly that which what they attack. So they, are the, they were the organization that wrote about the Family Research Council right. that was, they were cited by the guy who went and shot up, you know, shot yeah. somebody at the FRC. They, they recently lost a more than $3 million lawsuit for, for mislabeling a, a Muslim reformer as a hater. I know. As they keep, but now their organization's collapsing. Top people are resigning. The head of the organization resigned. It's, and it's, it couldn't happen to less nice people ever. <laughs> Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org. Stay with us for more here on the talk station. Dan, as always, thanks for being with us. 